Hey guys, good morning. Happy Sunday. How are you guys doing this week? I know that uh, this week I've had a little bit more allergies than I have before. Uh, summer is just around the corner. Things are changing as far as the weather goes. And I hope that you have been learning more and more about what God uh, is doing in the world and uh, you feel God's presence with you. You guys, now we are in the uh, middle of June already. I remember last month saying that June was just around the corner and here we are already halfway through. Now we're looking forward to July. So time is passing by really quickly. And I just want to encourage you guys to keep your eyes focused on Jesus and all that you're doing. Remember to keep him at the center and he will bless you. He will be with you. He will be faithful to you and provide the, uh, everything that you need. And so uh, just a few things before we start worship. Uh, this month is a, is a really special month. It's graduation month, which means that uh, those of you guys who are in fifth grade, you will be moving up to YG. And so again, like I mentioned last week, we're trying to do uh, something special for you guys uh, to celebrate you guys moving up into YG. But it also means that even if you're not graduating, uh, things will be changing for you as well. And so there's a lot to look forward to. Depending on what grade you're in, you will be having a new small group teacher likely. And so uh, things to look forward to as things change, as you guys grow. We're excited to move into this next chapter with you guys uh, as your teachers and as your leaders. And we're praying for you. We're thinking about you. We love you guys so much. Uh, and so a lot of things to be thankful for. But for now, let's go ahead and stand up and let's worship the Lord. And then we will be back here again. Okay, bye.
Psalm 55:22. Cast your cares on the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will sustain you. Cast your cares on the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will sustain you. Righteous fall, let the righteous fall. No, he will never, never, never let the righteous fall. Let the righteous fall. No, cast your cares on the Lord. Dear God, thank you for this wonderful time. Let us have great faith in you. Please let everyone overcome COVID-19. Let us be healthy, spiritually, and physically. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, I think by now all of you have officially finished your school year. Uh, so a huge congrats to you all and you guys really amazing job, really, really amazing job, especially during such a strange and difficult time in life and in the world. I know that not everything has changed for you, but not being able to go to school and see your friends unless you're homeschooled already, that's a huge change. And being home all day with your parents and your siblings, that's really hard to do. And so I'm sure it's been stressful and boring and just kind of blah, blah, blah for a lot of times. Uh, but I'm super impressed with how you guys have uh, stayed flexible and adjusted and kept a good attitude. And I hope in the midst of everything that has happened, uh, and all the things that you've uh, probably missed out on, a lot of parties, you know, graduation ceremonies, uh, maybe even birthdays and, and things like that, uh, you see God's goodness shine through and you see how He is doing good things in your life and all around the world uh, and that it fills your heart with gratitude and thanksgiving. Now, only God can take something horrible like a pandemic uh, and do incredible things and only God can take a city in protest over different things and continue to cause people to show love and care 
towards one another. Uh, now, today, as we listen and as you read uh, the Bible story, keep in mind our big picture question and answer for this unit. Uh, why did God create people? God created people to worship Him, to love Him, and to show His glory. So say that with me. Why did God create people? Why did God create people? God created people to worship Him, to love Him, and to show His glory. So this is really amazing. You know, God didn't need to create people. Do you guys hear that? He didn't need to create you. He didn't need me, but He wanted to. And He has a plan for the people in today's story. And He has a plan for us too. Now, last time uh, we heard a story about a time when Jesus healed some men who had a skin disease called leprosy. And Jesus healed 10 men, but only one man was saved. Remember when we trust in Jesus by faith, he heals us from everything, uh, but something greater than the disease. He saves us from our sin. And that's the biggest problem that we have. And only God can give us a solution through Jesus. And so uh, we can thank and worship him for making us new in Jesus. Now today's story is called Jesus Healed a Woman and a Girl. And so let's find out why Jesus needed, uh, why they needed Jesus' help. And so go ahead and turn to Mark chapter 5 in your Bibles. Now it says, uh, Jesus stood on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, and a large crowd gathered around him. Jairus, one of the leaders in the synagogue, fell at Jesus' feet and begged for his help. My daughter is about to die. Please come touch her, and she will be healed and live, he said. Now Jesus went with Jairus, and many people followed, crowding around him. And in the crowd was a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years years yes 12 years she had seen many doctors and had spent all her money trying to get better but no one could help her and she was only getting worse the woman said to herself if i touch even jesus's clothes i will be healed she came up behind jesus in the, cl in the crowd and touched his clothes immediately her bleeding stopped and she knew that she was healed and at that moment Jesus felt that power had gone out of him, and he turned around. Who touched my clothes? He asked. Jesus' disciples pointed out that many were crowded around him, but Jesus kept looking around. The woman, knowing she was healed, came forward and fell before Jesus, and she told him what had happened. Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. You are healed. While Jesus was speaking, some men came from Jairus' house and told Jairus, Your daughter is dead. Don't bother Jesus anymore. And Jesus heard what the men said, and he told Jairus, Do not be afraid. Just believe. Jesus and three of his disciples went to Jairus' house, and people there were crying and wailing loudly. Why are you crying? Jesus asked. The child is not dead. She is sleeping. And the people laughed because they, they did not believe Jesus, and he told them all to leave. Jesus took Jairus and his wife into the room where the child was. He took the girl by the hand and said, Little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began walking around, and Jairus and his wife were amazed. And Jesus told them to give the girl some food and to not tell anyone what had happened. What an incredible story. You guys, all throughout this unit, we'll be hearing about how Jesus heals uh, many, many different people in, in different situations. Now, when people heard uh, that Jesus had the power to heal, they brought their friends, family members, and neighbors to him. I know that if I heard that Jesus, this man, was healing people, I would call all of the people that I knew that were sick, that they needed to be healed, uh, and that they could go to him uh, to get better. If I were sick, Right? I would want to go to Jesus. And so you see all these crowds, they surrounded Jesus almost everywhere he went during this time. Now, do you remember the name of the man who went to Jesus for help because his daughter was dying? What was his name? Jairus. Right. So Jesus was going uh, with Jairus to heal his daughter when a woman, it says, in the crowd touched him. 
Now, why did the woman touch Jesus? Let's look at Mark chapter 5, verses 25 to 27. Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to 27. And this is what it says. It says, And there was a woman who had had a discharge, right? So something coming out, which was blood, for how many years? 12 years. None of you guys are even 12 years old right now. So imagine your entire life having some blood coming out of your body, right? It's, it sounds amazingly horrible, doesn't it? And this woman, it says, had suffered much under many physicians, right? Because she had gone to many doctors. She had spent all that she had and was no better. But it says that she grew worse. She was actually getting worse as time was going on because nobody could help her. And she had heard reports and news about Jesus and came up behind him in a crowd and says, touched his garment. Now, I just want to show you guys something. Uh, this is one of my favorite shirts, if not my favorite shirt. And I've had this probably around uh, 10 years. And it is so comfortable. Most of you guys probably have something like this, whether it's some pants, um, a sweater, a jacket, maybe even a hat or socks or even shoes, right? But this is my favorite shirt. I'll, I'll say that now. It is my favorite shirt. You know, it's light. Uh, it's kind of loose. And so it's not tight on my body. It's thin so it doesn't get hot, especially now in the summertime or as it's getting warmer. Um, you know, so my body never uh, feels stuffy or uncomfortable when I'm wearing it. You know, but beyond that, um, it's just a shirt, right? Now, imagine if it had healing powers. Of course, Jesus' clothes uh, has no power or had no power in and of themselves, right? He didn't go somewhere and, and get a special robe or jacket that would heal people. Now, when the woman touched Jesus' clothes, it only had power to heal because of who was wearing it. And that who, of course, is Jesus. You know, this shirt is comfortable as it is. It doesn't do things, right? It's just a shirt. I throw it in the wash, and one day it'll get so old that there'll be holes, uh, it'll rip, and then I'll have to throw it away. This woman had been suffering for so many years, you know, over 12 years, and no one could help her except for Jesus. Jesus was her only hope her one and only hope and she had faith that he could heal her and because of that she was healed and through this miracle Jesus showed that he had the power to heal as the Messiah but while this happened Jairus right he received the news that his daughter had died and how do you think Jairus felt at this time what did Jesus say to Jairus uh, look at Matthew 5 verses 35 and 36 it says, while he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? Right? So that he, he can't help you anymore. Your daughter has already died. It's too late. But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler, Jairus of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. Now, imagine how Jairus is feeling. Imagine his absolute sadness and just devastation when he heard that his daughter had died. The people around him, of course, again, suggested that Jesus was too late to help her. But Jesus proved all of them wrong. Jesus went to Jairus' house and he healed the little girl. And he raised this girl, says, from the dead. From the dead. You see... In the story, Jesus healed a woman and raised a girl from the dead. But you know what also happened? This woman and the father of that little girl, Jairus, they came to faith in Jesus. They needed Jesus' help so badly, and they trusted in Him and in His power to heal. Now, after Jesus died on the cross and He rose again from the dead, He ascended into heaven. And so, even though Jesus is not here physically on earth today, we can pray and ask God uh, to heal people who are sick. Uh, whether or not God heals people physically now on earth and in this life, that's totally up to Him. But we can rest knowing that God brings ultimate and complete whole healing through His Son, Jesus. And so, what is our Christ connection? By healing the woman and raising the little girl from the dead, Jesus showed His power 
as the Messiah, the one that God promised would come and rescue us from our sins. Jesus died on the cross and he rose again to save people from sin and death. And that's what he does for us. And when we trust in Jesus, God forgives our sins and he changes us to be more like his son. So let's go ahead and pray to God uh, for exactly this, that we would become more and more like Jesus. Father, we thank you in this story that uh, you are such a loving God that in Jesus, Father, you heal people who desperately need your help. And Father, we're, we're the same. We may not have the same illnesses or the same problems, but we do have that one problem of sin. And only Jesus is our solution. And so we thank you, God, that you sent Jesus to save us from sin and death by taking care of that payment on the cross and by cleansing us and forgiving us of all unrighteousness. We pray that now, as we live in this new life, that you would help us to become more like Jesus, to change every single day, a bit by bit, uh, into uh, the likeness of Jesus so that we reflect his, uh, his love his righteousness, uh, all the things that Jesus is, we want to be. And so help us, Lord, to grow in this way. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. So please go ahead and uh, do your activity sheets. Go over those family discussion questions with your parents and your siblings. I think those are really great ways for you guys to talk about uh, what you guys are learning with your parents, especially over dinner time when you're all together and having a really delicious meal. And... Uh, if you have not, please work on your memory verse. It's it's a really beautiful memory verse that we have this unit. I know that it's long, but it's a really key uh, passage, uh, a couple of verses in the Bible that will help you in your understanding of Jesus and how he is not only in the New Testament, but he's also in the Old Testament. Uh, and so uh, please work on that. Uh, you never know when you're going to need it, you know, and I mean that, but I, and then what I mean is, uh, you never know when you need God's word, uh, but trust me, you will. And when you hide it in your heart, when you memorize it and you take the time to know God's word by, by memory, uh, God will remind you at the perfect time. And that'll be a blessing, not only to you, but to the people that you share God's words with. Uh, and also remember that today we have a Zoom call at four. So it's a large group meeting uh, this time. So everyone... And if you have never, ever joined us for a call, today is the day. We really, really want to see you this week. And so please do your best at 4 o'clock to join us. I'll send out that link uh, in a little bit. So, okay, guys, uh, have a great day today, and we will see you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Father, thank you as always for all that you have given us, the ways that you show your love to us, not just in things, but especially in the people that are around us. But today as we give our offering, we remind ourselves that all this comes from you. It comes from your heart of love for us and your promise to care for each one of us as your sons and daughters. As always, please give wisdom to our leaders and pastors as they use this money. May it be a blessing, Father, uh, to those in our city, those in our church, uh, and also, uh, most of all, that it would be glorifying and honoring to you the way that we use it, that it would please you and that it would bring honor uh, to your name. So we thank you, Lord, for how faithful you are to us, that no matter what is going on in, in the world, uh, Father, you see us and you remember us and you shower down your blessings upon our lives. And so we thank you, God, again. Uh, thank you, of course, for Jesus and the life that he gives us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 and 5. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed.
우리가 우리에게 죄 지은 자를 사하여 준 것과 같이 우리 죄를 사하여 주옵시고 우리를 시험에 들게 하지 마옵시고 다만 악에서 구하옵소서 대개 나라와 권사와 영광이 아버지께 영원히 싸움나이다. 아멘. He gave His one and only Son, God, so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 to 5. Amen. 